Hey everyone, I'm here with Brent Welder in his field office in Kansas. We're gonna be spending the day with him, but first we wanna talk policy, why you're running, what your race is looking like. But I think the best way to start talking about that is to talk about your background as a labor lawyer um, and how you got involved in politics in the first place. Well, well, I, I got involved in politics in the first place um, when I was in probably high school, uh, knocking doors, making phone calls for, for local candidates uh, you know, that I believed in. That was kind of my first, my first introduction to politics. And then um, after college, uh, well actually and even during college, I did internships and then worked as a staff member um, uh, doing grassroots organizing. So I was one of the first staffers on uh, Barack Obama's campaign. I ran GOTV for the Massachusetts Democratic Party, for Patrick Murphy, the first Iraq War veteran in Congress. Um, and was the national field director for the Teamsters Union, among a, a bunch of other things. Uh, in fact, I met my wife when uh, she was a uh, grassroots organizer for Howard Dean. I was working for John Kerry 15 years ago up in the Iowa caucus. Wow, okay, so you do have a background. <laughs> and, and people can see there's an array of campaign posters dating back to many decades previously in, in this campaign office. Working in, in politics, I've spent a lot of time in labor union halls around this country, uh, all over the place. And, um, you know, my job actually with the Teamsters was to try to convince as many of our members, there were over a million of them, um, stereotypically it was, you know, middle-aged, blue-collar truck drivers. And, um, you know, when I first got on the job, we, we pulled our membership because we wanted to see where they were. And actually a majority of them were supporting John McCain over Barack Obama at the time. Uh, so we went to work, we, we did a huge outreach program, knocking doors. Um, but one of the things we did was we hired 750 Teamsters off their normal day job to go into every targeted workplace in America and talk to their coworkers about that election. And what we found was that when they really focused on economic populist ideas, raising wages, protecting um, benefits like health care, uh, when they talked about protecting pensions so that when they retired, they didn't just have the rug pulled out from underneath them and they could actually retire with dignity and protecting the financial security of themselves and their family, that they were overwhelmingly likely to vote for Democrats and for Barack Obama. And, and we polled the membership a week before the election, and 75% of those Teamsters ultimately voted for Barack Obama over John McCain, uh, when McCain had been winning early, you know, a year earlier in the polls. In Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who I, that was, she was the last person I did this kind of series with, so uh, it's all me, <laughs> it's hopefully yeah. this will help. Um, you know, she is a test case for that hunger, that hunger for an uncorrupted candidate. And she came out to rally with you along with Bernie Sanders. So the, seeing the three of you alongside was pretty awesome. Um, but a lot of people in the media are trying to make it about her identity and her gender, which uh, uh, why she won. But it's really the message. And you're, you know, a white guy in Kansas. If you can win and inspire people on this message, it's not about identity. <laughs> Our campaign says, yes, we can have. I've heard an old adage, you know, on, on campaigns where they say, we need to drag uh, voters to the polls or drag Democrats to the polls because they're not voting enough. But what I really believe is that we need to inspire voters to the polls because we're not going to be able to drag them. We need them to want to come and vote for candidates. Expand the electorate, which was really the blueprint of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and it seems to be something that you're taking too. Exactly. I mean, I think there's, you know, one of the reasons, so, you know, I'm beating Kevin Yoder by seven points in independent polling. Um, which is the largest margin of any Democratic challenger in the country, and it's right. Which here is why the Democrats have to put up two separate different candidates to go up against <laughs> you, who do take corporate money, but continue. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think that that right there, um, you know, I don't think any, I, I don't know that any Democratic challenger against Congressman Yoder in the years he's been in has ever had one poll showing them even beating him, and now I'm up by seven points over over Kevin Yoder. And I think the reason for that is a couple of reasons. One is, is we're expanding the, elect, the electorate. We're giving hope back to the people who, you know, they just see the same middle of the road promises from Republicans and Democrats. They don't see any difference. They never see any change. They think the whole system is corrupted. And then the other reason I think we're doing so well and that our campaign has caught on so much is it goes back to these voters that voted for Barack Obama and Donald Trump that you can bring back into the Democratic Party to vote for you. But the only way to do that is to really run on these bold, progressive, populist economic issues that really affect them. He's a true progressive who stands by those ideals. Uh, you know, he's somebody that's not going to just toe the party line, you know, 
Brent's Brent, and Brent's going to look out for us. And like I said, great candidates on board, but the cream rises to the top, and I think the best shot against Yoder is Brent Welder. This district went to Bernie Sanders uh, in, in the primary and to Hillary Clinton in the general election, but uh, Yoder still won re-election, so uh, it's split. So the, the, a Republican won this district uh, in the House, but it, it, he did not win, on, uh, or Hillary Clinton won this district on, on the national level. So I think that's really interesting, and it goes to show that your campaign is kind of uh, a perfect storm, right? So you were a delegate for Bernie Sanders, and this district is very purple, so uh, Bernie Sanders is not only popular here, but the Democratic message in general clearly has a way forward. Can you talk about the, the unique position that you're in? Yes, so um, uh, the, the Democratic nominee in this district in 2016 um, lost to Kevin Yoder by 11 points and was running on, he ran, you know, he ran a strong campaign. They spent millions of dollars. Um, he was running on the same kind of standard you know, kind of middle of the road, somewhat corporatist message that so many Democrats across the country have been running on for the last 10 years. And, um, you know, uh, clearly it didn't work. Clearly it didn't work. That's the same. It's, it was the same kind of message that Democrats have tried uh, in previous cycles against Kevin Yoder, and it just didn't work. Yes, Hillary Clinton won our district by one point, and that's great. And, and I've had a lot of people tell me from the beginning of this race, like, Oh, this is great. All you have to do now is just get the people that voted for Hillary Clinton to vote for you, and and we're all set to go. But you know, I don't think that we really um, want to take a risk and say the best case scenario is that I win by one point, which is what Hillary Clinton won by in this district. We have to reach out to these these people, these working class people that voted for for Barack Obama and then Donald Trump, and these and I'm telling you, these are not the country club Republican types. Uh, a lot of the country club Republican folks that I that I've met. They, they, a lot of them liked Donald Trump, but then the ones that didn't, they would complain about him and complain about him. But you know what? At the end of the day, they went into the voting booth and they voted for him. The people who voted for Obama and then Donald Trump are these working class folks that will come to the Democratic Party and have come to the Democratic Party in, in the past, but only when we run on bold, populist, progressive economic ideas that they can see directly will help them. And that's um, how we're building this winning coalition that um, you know, is beating uh, Congressman Yoder by the biggest margin of any Democratic challenger in the country. And, um, you know, I think we need to, you know, obviously it's great that we have a base of voters that voted for Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders in this district. Um, but this kind of messaging can really expand on that. And, and I'm hoping that this, and I'm seeing it, I'm seeing this kind of message catch on with other candidates around the country. And when we win this race in Kansas, um, uh, you know, I'm really hoping that it, that people around the country will see that this is the kind of message we need to win these true swing districts and that it's the message that can win in any district across the country. Like I said, these progressive ideals of getting money out of politics, $15 minimum wage, uh, minimum wage you know, inclusive voting, not trying to, you know, take away rights. That doesn't sound revolutionary to me. That just seems something that we want. That's something that's, you know, for the working person. And, you know, when you just present that message as is, uh, I think it's pretty obvious.